Hey, it's Zell. Welcome to part 2 of the Visual Code Setup series. If you haven't watched the first part yet, I suggest you do so because everything we're going to do today follows on from the first part. Today, what we're going to do is set up VS Code for editing HTML, CSS and JavaScript. The first thing I'd like to do is to set format on save to true. You can do so by searching for format on save and you'll see it in the left column. To edit format on save, you can click on the left button and select the one that you want to use, in this case, through. At the same time, let's also do format on paste to through because this is more of a personal preference thing. Now, why format on save? If you set format on save to true, whenever you save a file, VS Code will format or beautify your code automatically. With that, let's move on to the HTML settings. The first thing that you may notice if you edit HTML and if your HTML is slightly longer than normal, you'll notice that you'll be able to move your editor left and right. I find this very disturbing. I would prefer to have everything wrapped in my editor so I don't have to shift it left and right. So the first thing I'll do is to format that wrap. You can do so by searching for wrap. Editor.wordwrap is the one that you're looking for. You can set it to on, word wrap column or bounded. In this case, I'm going to set it to on because I prefer that setting. Once you set it to on, you'll notice that we can't move it. We can't move the text editor to the left and right anymore. The words get wrapped nicely with your editor. Now there is a problem right now because when you hit save, the paragraph of text wraps at a very weird manner. The reason this happens is because VS Code sets the maximum number of characters in HTML documents to be 120. You can search for HTML and look for HTML.format.wrap line length. Now set this to zero and save it again and this will be fixed. And that's it for the HTML settings file. There are a few more extensions that can be very useful for HTML. One of them is called auto rename tags. Yep, so this is the one we're looking for. Select install. Reload your browser. And once you have that installed, you can change the opening tag of your HTML and the closing tag will change automatically. The next thing we want to do is to set up IntelliSense for CSS names. So what's, what this does, it, it looks in your CSS file and helps you auto-complete the selectors that you may have used. Once you have this extension installed, you can type class equal. Make sure you open the brackets yourself, otherwise the extension doesn't work. So you can see we have a few um, CSS class names to go for. And that's it for the HTML part of things. Let's move on to CSS. For CSS, I recommend installing a few extensions. The first one is called SAS. SAS gives you syntax highlighting and auto completion for SAS. Another one that I recommend is Prettier. The first one is the one we're looking for, Prettier Code Formatter. We're also going to install CSS Peak. I'm going to go through what they do in a moment. So let's install all of them first. And finally, you might want to install StyleLint. For this, it depends on you, uh, but styling would require more of an advanced configuration. So I'm not going to go into details in this video. Make sure you reload your window or the extensions won't work. So the stats extension gives you 
the ability to write in SES and change the language to SES. To change the language, click on the CSS button below over here, change it to SCSS, which is what I usually use when I write SES. Prettier will help you format CSS properly. So when you save, it formats it properly. The reason why I use Prettier is because Prettier allows you to configure how you want to format your CSS with Starlint. If you want to do so, you need to set the Starlint integration to true and set Starlint to enable through. But in this case, um, since we have not installed Starlint, these two things don't really make sense. So I'm going to remove it. You can explore Starlint on your own when you have some time. CSS pick gives you the ability to search your CSS files for selectors. If you press Command R, you can look specifically for a selector to bring you there without having to do a normal find. And that's what I do for CSS. For JavaScript, I install a few extensions as well. The first one I install is JavaScript Standard Style. This is the one we are, going, we are looking for. I also install Standard Snippets, which will help me write JavaScript a little bit faster. Sublime Babel and NPM IntelliSense. Once I've installed these four extensions, hit, on, hit reload. Always make sure to reload the VS Code editor when you install anything, or the extensions wouldn't work. The standard built-in JavaScript validator adds semicolons to your JavaScript file. I don't use that, I use standard. So what happens is we need to add standard to the JavaScript settings first. There are a few steps to do so. The first step is to remove VS Code JavaScript validator with javascript.validate.enable false. The second step is to prevent Prettier from formatting JavaScript because that is built into Prettier itself. We want to use standard to format JavaScript. The third step is to turn on standards validator with standard.validate and passing in the file formats that you want to validate for. Finally, you want to set standard.autosave on true to format files automatically when you save a JavaScript file. And this is how I configure VS Code for my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript settings. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscribe button, and I'll send you a video like this every Friday. Or better yet, if you go over to my blog and subscribe over there, I'll send you one article and one video every week to help you become a better front-end developer. With that, happy Friday and I hope you have a good weekend. See you next week.